It is the first week of October and we're in the middle of the planet season of 2022 where we can take nice pictures of bright planets like Mars, Jupiter and Saturn. Taking a picture of a planet is not easy for some amateurs. And in this video I want to cover some tips you may want to use when taking pictures of planets through a telescope. Most of these tips are related to beginners, however, some of them will be useful even if you have some experience. Let's start with some general tips. It is obvious, but you really want to take pictures of planets under really good observation conditions, or seeing as we usually call it. Good seeing is not just about clear skies, it is also about low air turbulence and good sky transparency. Look at these two pictures of Jupiter that I got recently. They both were taken under the clear skies, but the quality of these images is different. The interesting part about seeing is that you don't actually know when it becomes better. You can capture a planet during a few hours in a row and have just 15 minutes of a good seeing. Although it is hard to deal with seeing since you can't control it, you can control the location you're observing from. It is also important. Try to set up your telescope so that there are no closed buildings or constructions between you and a planet you're planning to observe. During the daytime, the roof of these buildings heats up and it cools down over the course of the night. At the nighttime, when the heat comes up from the roof, it causes additional air turbulence and air fluctuations that also affect the quality of images that you take. You want to make sure the telescope itself is ready for planetary astrophotography. If you use a reflector or schmidt cassegrain telescope, you want to make sure that the telescope is well collimated. Check your collimation often. If you use a reflector telescope, you may even want to check collimation each time before you start shooting. Remember that you take pictures of planets at a higher focal length, and even small collimation deviations might crucially decrease performance of your telescope. It might sound crazy, but the difference in temperature inside the telescope and ambient temperature also creates additional fluctuations that affect the quality of images you get. If you take a telescope from your house and start capturing planets right away when it's much cooler outside, most likely you will not see a good picture, although you can experience some great seeing. What you need to do is to set up your telescope a few hours before you start capturing planets. Remember that bigger telescopes require more time to reach temperature equilibrium with ambient temperature, and some stratographers also use cooling fans to make this process even faster. Of course, we try to use a telescope with a big aperture and high focal length to reveal more details of planets. We also use barrel lenses that help us to increase the focal length of a telescope and make objects bigger on the camera sensor. There are many barrel lenses on the market with different magnifications, so how to figure out what kind of barrel lens you should use? I usually look at f-ratio I get using a specific barrel lens. Sometimes it's mentioned on the telescope itself, but you can also easily calculate it. Just take a focal length of your telescope and divide it by the size of the aperture. If you capture bright planets like Venus, Jupiter or Mars, you can push your f-ratio up to f20, or if you have great seeing conditions up to f25. Uh, the brightness of planet Saturn is a bit lower, so you want to limit your f-ratio and keep it around f20. Also keep an eye on the seeing. If you experience some bad seeing, there is no reason to increase your focal length. Let me show you an example. I can use a 2x barrel lens with my 10-inch telescope and get f20 focal ratio, but I need to use a 4x barrel lens if I capture using my Skywatcher 150 PDS telescope if I want to get the same f-ratio. Now, let's cover some software tips. I think that the most popular app for planetary imaging is Fire Capture, so I'll be covering tips for this app. Fire Capture has a feature called Auto Align that you can find handy when focusing. When you set the focus, objects can go all over the camera sensor, and Auto Align helps to keep an object centered while it's in the camera field of view. Paying attention to high contrast areas of planets can help you to make sure you set the focus correctly. It can be the Cassini division on Saturn, cloud structures of Jupiter or its satellites, and if we talk about planet Mars, there can be different details on the planet surface. Some amateurs also focus on a star using a button of mask first, and then point a the telescope to a planet. Planets don't take much space on the camera sensor, and there is no sense to record video using the whole camera sensor. You can record videos from a small part of the camera sensor, and it's called region of interest. When you capture from a small part of the sensor, you can capture more frames per second, and also output files take lesser amount of storage, which is also good. What about camera settings? If you use a dedicated planetary camera, you basically want to adjust gain and exposure. 
With higher gain, you have more noise in the picture, and higher exposure makes the images brighter, but frame rate decreases. So what you want to do is to find this perfect spot where you have a good frame rate and not a lot of noise on the picture. When I capture planets, I try to set up exposure that gives me at least 60 frames per second rate for bright planets, and I can go down to 30 frames per second if I capture planet Saturn, let's say. So I set the exposure first, and then I adjust gain. When I adjust gain, I usually look at the histogram, and I try to keep it peaking on the right side at about 60 or maybe 70%. Let's talk about the final extension you might want to use. I personally use the extension called .ser to capture videos of planets. This extension allows you to capture uncompressed files. It supports up to 16 bits per pixel values, and it also understands the bare pattern of your camera, so you don't have to capture color videos, which results on saving on storage as well. The auto staggered app works great with this file extension, and you won't face any problems processing this type of file. Fire Capture allows you to use auto guiding component and keeps it centered at all time of capturing, so you don't have to adjust the mount position manually. I personally believe this is one of the coolest features of fire capture that actually saves a lot of my time since I can leave the telescope capturing any planet the same way I can leave it capturing a deep sky object. How long should we record videos of planets? Every planet has different speed of rotation. Some of them rotate faster and some slower. Planetary rotation causes blurring of details if you capture long videos. There are different limits for each planet. If you capture Jupiter, you want to take your videos up to 60 or maybe 70 seconds long, and if you have a good aperture like a 10-inch telescope, I wouldn't capture longer than 60 seconds. Planet Mars rotates a little slower than planet Earth, and you can take videos of Mars up to 4 or even 5 minutes long and get detailed views of this planet. Planet Saturn is an exception. Although it rotates pretty fast, it usually doesn't have a seasonal storms as Jupiter has, so you can take really long videos and stack these frames later in a stacking software with no problems. When you capture planets using a color camera, you can notice some blue and red lights around the planet's globe. This effect is known as atmospheric dispersion, and it's caused by the Earth's atmosphere. You can use a device called an atmospheric dispersion corrector to reduce this effect. It has two prisms that you need to adjust so that red and blue channels align with the planet's globe. As a result, you improve the quality of images that you take. The last tip I want to mention tonight is related to your storage. You want to make sure you have enough storage space to be able to record videos of any planet during a long period of time. For example, a one-minute video of Jupiter taken at about 55 frames per second rate can take up to one or maybe one and a half gigabytes of storage. I can spend hours taking pictures of Jupiter over the course of the night, and in my example I take let's say one and a half gigabyte of storage every minute, which results in around 306 gigabytes over the four hour imaging session. You might want to have an external hard drive specifically for planetary imaging unless you have enough storage on your PC or a laptop. Alright guys, I've just covered all tips of planetary astrophotography I want to cover tonight. I hope this video was helpful to you, and if it is, please hit the like button and also consider subscribing to my channel. Leave me a comment down below if you have any questions about the tips I've mentioned or share your tips that I could have missed. At the end, I'll show you my best picture of planet Jupiter I captured earlier in September. I really hope to see you in future videos, and until then, clear skies.